today I want to show you guys my tumble dryer. And what this is, is after an extraction, you've got the leftover material, the tailings that are still saturated with alcohol. And this is to recover that alcohol. Um, and so I will open it up, I'll show you guys inside, and uh, then we'll get it started. So this is what it looks like inside. You can see we've got a paddle. Uh, let's see if we can see that paddle there. Right over here, we've got a couple of paddles and what those do is as the tumbler rotates, it helps agitate the material to expose more surface area for better drying. Um, we have our center shaft with three filter heads. Um, the filter heads actually act as forks to agitate as well. Uh, but they prevent the material from getting into the vapor stream. So as this material, as the solvent is evaporating out of the material, it's going into the filters and it travels into the condenser where it turns back into liquid uh, and we collect it in a collection drum. Um, so we'll close this thing up and then I'll show you guys how it works. First thing we do to get this started is we gotta turn on our heat source. Uh, I'm using a Reamers uh, 40KW low pressure uh, boiler to give it some steam. And so we just turn on our on switch and we get the steam going and that heats up the jacket. So the next thing we do after we get our steam going is turn on our power, we got our power switch, we've got a forward and reverse control, and that's uh, for easy load, unload, so right now we got it in forward, and then we've got a variable speed control. So we just hit the run button, and this is zero to 60 RPM, and we're gonna go all the way up to 60. So now that we got this thing going, I'll show you guys um, some of the features. Um, let's see, over on this end is where we have our steam. And you can see it's a pretty simple setup. We've got our steam in right here. And then we've got the outlet right here that heads back to the boiler. Uh, to get reheated and then comes back through right here. And you can see it goes through our uh, rotary joint right here and that's what heats up the jacket. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at the other end. And what we've got here is another rotary union. This is for the product or the alcohol vapors. So the other side is strictly steam that goes to the jacket. This is the collecting of the vapor inside the vessel. And it travels through our line here up to our air-cooled condenser. And I think we've heated up enough now that we're running just a little bit, starting to get going. I don't know if we can see that. But on the air-cooled condenser, we've got individual coils, and so we've, it creates more surface area for cooling. Uh, the condenser's got a fan on, or a filter on the end of it to keep all the coils clean. Uh, we've got a fan on the other end. That pulls the air through, and exhaust is connected to the exterior of the building. Um, once the vapor makes it through the coils, turns back into liquid, we've got a collection manifold inside the shell and it drains it down into this hose. And this line carries it to our water removal system. So similar to the CRC filters EDH system, everything here is gravity, so there's no extra pumps. Um, so we travel down through here and we've got our 3A molecular sieve column here. Now this is a jacketed column for R&D purposes, but we don't need to use the jacket so it's not connected. Um, the fluid 
fills this up and continues to travel into our collection drum. So we've got a standard 55 gallon collection drum here uh, that is also vented. And so the vent leads back up to our exhaust system. So any vapor that may potentially get through or just off gassing from the storage of the alcohol uh, will all get exhausted outside. And so that is the basic uh, rundown. Okay, now that the cycle's over, I wanna show you guys how it raises up and down uh, for emptying. So we just have a hydraulic uh, lift here and you just hit the up button. All the hoses um, are flexible so that it can raise and lower without any disconnections. Uh, we use a flex duct on the exhaust line for the same purpose. Once you get it up where you want it, you can slide a super sack under there. We keep our super sack on a cart and so we just roll it around. You've got your forward and reverse control and you open the lid, you put it in reverse and it'll dump right into the super sack. Uh, as soon as you're finished, you just lower it right back down. And that's all there is to it.